I am Slick Nick, and welcome to yet another body recomposition video. I appreciate all 53 of you who watch these videos. I know it's not the main topic that draws in the crowd here on this channel, but these videos are for you to teach me because I'm very open about the concept that I don't know what I'm doing. And I would love to learn from a YouTube audience as I'm experimenting on myself, and I get it. There are different ways to get different results based on your body type and all these sort of things. But what I have taught myself through this journey is what works best for me is keto. But up until now, I haven't been doing keto along with a minimum of 171 grams of complete protein a day. Now, my goal was just to get 156 because that's how many pounds I weighed. But check this out. I now, actually a week into it, weigh more like 160, 161 pounds. Yeah, like five or six pounds more. So let's talk about that because I'm telling you, I'm not exaggerating this, 3,000 calories a day is the norm. Minimum norm. I'm doing at least 3,000 calories a day now, and it's very easy to do when you're on keto. Now, let me be clear, I'm definitely committing to intermittent fasting. I'm not eating actually any meals at least until 2 p.m., and I am done by 8 p.m., so it's a six-hour window. That's the only time I'm actually eating food other than my cups of coffee, which I'll put pure fat in there, whether it's MCT oil, uh, coconut oil, butter, whole cream. There is obviously calories in that, but there's not protein in it, and the keto theory is that that does not spike your insulin. So, does keto actually work as far as burning more fat, intermittent fasting? I don't know and I don't really care. What I do know is this is what helps me to just be constantly hungry all the time. I hate being hungry all the time. If at the end of the day, I can either you know do carbs with every time I have protein and do 30 grams of protein every three hours, or I can just be keto and eat the same amount of protein at the end of the day. I'd rather do keto because I'm not constantly hungry and I would prefer that. So that's what makes me happy. So what's interesting, again, this is the first time ever, you know, in me working out, I've been committed to this for like a year and a half now, and changing my diet, trying to make it work. But this is the first time I've ever been in a surplus, doing at least 171 grams of complete protein a day, and keto and intermittent fasting and really stepping up my game in the gym. I mean, I'm there minimum of 30 minutes, six days a week, and I am really pushing the limits. Plus I walk a minimum of 30 minutes a day afterwards. Every single day, except for my day off, I'll take one day off from the gym, but even then I'm still walking. So here's what's interesting. I don't feel fat yet. You know, people have said in the comment section that, well, you, you will know. You'll know what's working best for your body. If you're consuming too many calories and it's turning to fat, you're gonna know it. You're gonna know how you, you're gonna feel it in your waist, how, you, how your pants feel, how your t-shirts fit. You're gonna know if you're storing extra belly fat in this surplus. Because keep in mind, I've been pretty faithful to like 1,900 calories a day while still doing the 171 grams of complete protein a day. You know? But now that I went full strict keto again, I mean as strict as you can possibly be, here's what I can tell you. I feel no excess body fat at all anywhere on my body, especially not my belly. To the extent, for what it's worth to you, knowing that I now weigh about five pounds more than I did before, for what it's worth to you, yesterday I was putting on my box of briefs. I was like, these don't fit. There's a huge, there's a gap in them now, like where my waist is, like they won't even stay up. And they were size large. So I had like six of these from back from when I was a size 34 waist, whereas now I'm 31 and almost a little bit baggy with the 31. So I rounded up all my size large and I threw them in the garbage. And some of my medium boxer briefs, I threw them in the garbage. So they have to either be size small waist or a smaller fitting medium for me to even be able to wear those. And that's happened since the 3,000 calories a day minimum every day. Now keep in mind, a week into this surplus thing, the first week, the first half of the week, I was eating right after my workout. Like eight o'clock, I'd eat 30 grams of protein. I'd have my carbs too. I'd, I'd make sure that I had you know my macros figured out. 
and I'd eat five mini meals throughout the day and I was just constantly hungry. And I wasn't happy doing it because I was just so hungry all the time. That's all I could think about. Then the second half of the week, I was like, let me just go full keto again and see how that works for me. And now I'm happy and now I'm not constantly hungry. And now I have to force myself to eat even though I'm not actually hungry. That, that makes me happy. So this is an experiment on myself. We're testing this thing out. It's not so much that I'm trying to prove is keto real, does it work? I already know keto works best for me. But specifically, the real question I'm asking is, can I prevent from gaining excess belly fat as I am working to build more muscle on my actual body? Because what I was trying to do was only add 100 calories to my diet for the, each week, like to my daily, so to go like from 1900 to 2000. And then the next week, do 2100 and then 2200. That was my goal, but I couldn't do it without doing, Keto is the only thing that would work. I was just too hungry doing it that way, eating that often. So it just didn't work for me. But I don't really care about any of that. I just want to ideally be able to build my muscle mass up and at the same time not have a belly full of fat when, by the time I'm done with, with my bulking stage. And if it means anything, so far I can't see that I've gained any any fat. It must be muscle if I'm consistently weighing five pounds more since I've been doing this. And it's not just today, it's like the past several days. I've been consistently weighing five or six pounds more than when I switched to the surplus. So I think that's pretty interesting. We'll see what that means. We'll track this, you know, a month from now or Thanksgiving, you know, we'll have a good idea from that. But in my mind, I'm thinking, well, I can't just stay in a surplus and work out as hard as I am and consume all this protein without it making some kind of change on my body. I mean, it'd be one thing if I wasn't quite in a surplus, but I'm telling you, there's no way I can't be at 3000. I mean, in case I just need to convince you of this, I'm eating a can of tuna a day with 30 grams of protein. I'm eating four eggs. I'm eating half a pack of bacon. I am eating an entire cup of full fat cottage cheese. I'm eating uh, a three quarters cup of 5% Greek yogurt, which is the second highest amount of fat that you can have in there. I'm having a salad with uh, guacamole in it. I cook my eggs in avocado oil. So there's over hundred grams of, you know, there, there's over hundred calories right there. I also, in my tuna, I add a, a tablespoon of virgin olive oil in there. And then I have, when I have that yogurt at night, right before I go to bed, I put a whole thing of chia seeds in there. Um, I also do cacao nibs in there that I add. And not to mention my coffee. And my coffee, first cup of coffee, MCT oil, a tablespoon. Second cup, I do a quarter cup of whole cream and at least one slice of butter. And I do my collagen. I mean, that's a lot of calories. And it's a lot more calories than I've been before. So I can't imagine that I'm not in a caloric surplus at this point. So, that's what I know so far. What do you know? Tell me right here in the comments.